All right, g'day IB psychologist. IB health psychology continued. We have looked at cognitive and social, cult explana social cultural explanations of stress, and now we're getting into biological explanations. In the previous video tutorial, we looked at how the COMPT gene is linked with stress, and we looked at the warrior warrior hypothesis. We're going to get further explanation as to why that genotype is linked with stress. All right. So to review, genes can give us one biological explanation for why some people are more at risk of having high stress and chronic stress than others. Uh, and so the METs, remember, are the warriors, and the vowels are the warriors. Today we're going to learn more about why that connection exists. So to review just quickly what we did in the previous lesson, right? The vowels produce more of the COMPT enzyme. The enzyme breaks down neurotransmitters in the synapse. More enzyme means less neurotransmission is occurring in the synapse. On the other hand, the METs have less enzyme, so they have more levels of things like dopamine and noradrenaline that remain in the synapse. Noradrenaline is linked with a stress response. It helps activate the stress response. So if you've got less COMPT enzyme because of your genotype, you're a MET-MET, then that means you're going to have more neuro, uh, noradrenaline remaining in the synapse to continually be neuro, uh, to continually being firing and binding to the postsynaptic neuron, right, relaying those messages. So you might have an elevated stress response. Okay, so that gives us one explanation as to why. Now, more research has been linked to the COMP genotype and the brain. So in particular, the hippoc you, if you've um, covered and followed a lot of my tutorials and blogs, you'll know I think the three most important parts of the brain for any beginning psychologist are the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the prefrontal cortex. These come up again and again in almost every behavior. So in one study, the vowels had larger hippocampi than the vowel mets. They didn't actually have enough of the met homozygotes to compare in that study. Um, but we're going to come back to this in a moment to explain why this might be important. The METs, in a different study, METs who experienced ACEs are more likely to have reduced hippocampal volume. And other research as well, and you can read more about this on our blog post if you just Google, uh, go onto our blog and search stress and hippocampus, or type into Google thematic stress hippocampus, you'll find out that um, a small hippoc uh, hippocampal volume, small hippocampus, can actually predict stress. We know that chronic stress shrinks the hippocampus, but actually it can work in the opposite way as well. Um, now, what's really important to note here about the hippocampus, you might already know that it is linked with memory. So it helps to consolidate memory, make short-term into long-term memory. If you uh, cover the famous case of HM or Clive Waring, the guys who have had their hippocampi removed, they can't make new memories. But the hippocampus is also linked in the stress response. All right, so this is the hippocampus here. We can break it down into the dorsal and the ventral, right? Dorsal meaning top, ventral meaning bottom. Now, one function of the ventral hippocampus is the regulation of the HPA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And so the regulation of the HPA axis um, uh, is really important to the stress response, right? Because if you can't shut down the HPA axis, you're going to have elevated levels of stress. So what they've found in animal studies is that if you lesion, right, you damage the, the, the neurons in the hippocampus, there's a higher anticipatory stress response. So meaning when an animal is um, anticipating, realizing that something scary is going to happen, right, they have an elevated response. And also their AP, HPA axis uh, is activated for longer. That's if you damage the hippocampus. So we know that the hippocampus is linked to the stress response. And we go back to those earlier studies linking the genes to the brain, the hippocampus, that could give us more of an explanation. Other studies have found if you, we stimulate the hippocampus with, um, electrically, it reduces cortisol levels following a stressor, which suggests it's helping to inhibit the activation of the HPA axis. So this evidence here is just showing that not only is the hippocampus involved in memory, the dorsal hippocampus, but the ventral hippocampus is really important in regulating the stress response. So if we go back to those um, studies here, right, the vowels have a larger hippocampi. Maybe it's because of their, uh, their, hip, their larger hippocampus and the ability to regulate the HPA axis, why they have lower levels of stress. All right, um, couple that with ACEs, which we've covered in previous lessons, makes the METs more vulnerable to stress as well. All right, so it could be because of the link with the brain. Now, let's have a look at the COMP gene and the amygdala, another really important part of the brain in the stress response. So METs have a more responsive amygdala. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, and the COMP gene and the brain could be why studies have found METs have higher physiological reactions to acute stresses. Ah, yes, okay, so just quite simply, right, that's a very basic, straightforward explanation. Um, 
that if you have a if your amygdala is more responsive to threats in your environment the amygdala is what can trigger the hpa axis and can trigger the fight or flight response that's part of its job so if you have if mets have a more responsive amygdala that could explain why they uh, show more stress in a in acute stressful situations and actually that's what the key study in this lesson in the textbook and in all the support um, packs you can find that's what this study shows if you they took um people with the val val homozygote and the met met and they put them in the trier social stress test and they found that the mets have the more higher acute physiological stress response in a stressful situation that could be because more levels of neuroadrenaline um, the link with their amygdala reactivity could be linked with their hippocampus could be a number of these factors but these are all possible explanations as to why the comp gene is linked with stress all right and so hopefully that now makes sense now what we're doing here is we're just adding depth to your explanations and that you can say sure i know what the warrior warrior hypothesis is i know what the comp gene is i know how it's linked with stress and then you go further and go why and you've got two studies there to support that that would make for a fantastic explanation for a health problem like stress and also for paper one for the genetics link what I really like about this example, this is more for the teacher's point of view here, is that it can, there's some basics for every student to understand, and it has the whole depth of explanation possible, so every student can be explaining this to the depth that they're confident with. Um, so I, I like that. Anyway, okay, so again, this is all covered in our ebook. Uh, keep checking the blog for updates. All of this information is slowly going up on the blog along with exam advice and assessment tips. Uh, if you hit the subscribe button, then I try to send out uh, weekly emails with all the new latest blog posts and check out the store for updates we've also got facebook groups for students and teachers i hope that was helpful and coming up in the next lesson we're going to look at the biopsychosocial model